Hi everyone, this is my first effort at making a 151 lecture that I can post on YouTube. So I hope it goes well. The campus is completely closed for the rest of the term. We have not figured out exactly how labs are going to run, but we're working on it. It's going to happen. Um, and I would really like your feedback on these lectures. I'll be sending you this link uh, to the YouTube channel so you can view them when you've got internet. All right. Uh, in the meantime, I'm recording these from my house. So there is a not insignificant chance that you will get to meet at least one of my cats. In the meantime, let's get going. We're talking about muscles. Now muscles, this should be a review for you from 150. 150, you learned the names of lots and lots of muscles, and you probably looked at them also through the microscope. Let's real quickly go over what are the functions of muscle tissue. The first thing that muscle does, of course, is skeletal muscle allows us to physically move, but that's not all. Skeletal muscle also gives your body a certain stability. Um, if you've ever picked up a completely sound asleep child, you know how much heavier they feel when they're sound asleep. And that's because without m conscious muscle movement to stabilize all of their joints, um, they, they feel very different when they're picked up. Um, for those of you going into nursing, you should remember that not just paralyzed patients, but also completely unconscious patients, patients who have been um, anesthetized, they need to be handled really carefully because their body is not protecting their own joints like the joints of their neck. But muscle is also responsible for every time any substance gets moved in the body. For example, your heart beats so that blood can get moved throughout your body and it's our transportation system. Um, your mouth. When saliva goes into your mouth, the reason it went in there is because there was smooth muscle here in the glands that contracted, gave a little squeeze, and they're squeezing the saliva into your mouth. And then things like your stomach, right? Your stomach and your intestinal tract, that's also smooth muscle. And when food gets moved you know, from your stomach down to your small intestine and on its way out, that is all going to be the uh, movement of smooth muscle. But muscle is also important for heat production. Um, and that's easy to forget. The more uh, skeletal muscle an individual has, the easier it is for them to stay warm when their environment is cooler than they are. Now, most of the time our environment is what? 72 or something like that, sometimes colder. Um, the reason that in any individual household or office where people work together, that there will be disagreements about the proper uh, temperature to set the thermostat at it is largely because of the amount of muscle mass and body fat that people have. If someone's got a lot of muscle mass, it's generating a lot of heat. If that person also has got quite a bit of uh, fat that is insulating that muscle mass, those are two things that are going to make those people feel warm at a much colder temperature than perhaps a, uh, a slender, older woman who has very little muscle mass. Um, keep this in mind, particularly when you're dealing with chronically ill individuals, uh, you as the nurse, as you're racing around and you're able-bodied in a hospital, you might feel quite comfortably warm. But one of your patients that has lost a significant amount of muscle mass because they're fighting a chronic disease like kidney disease or cancer, um, and they're just laying still in bed, they are a lot colder than you. They are not just complaining. So this is what different types of muscle look like through the microscope. And you should be familiar with this. This is also 150 material. Uh, part, ooh, I'm going to try and see if I can get the laser pointer to work. I do not see a laser pointer. How about here? No? Oops. Okay. Well, I don't know if a laser pointer is working, but uh, the, this image that is on the left of your slide that says A, that is skeletal muscle through the microscope. 
Uh, the image that's marked B, that is smooth muscle through the microscope, and the image marked C, that is cardiac muscle through the microscope. And written right here on these different images, I've shown, I've indicated the really important things to remember about these different muscle types. Uh, skeletal muscle is striated, which means it's got stripes, okay? So there's a stripe and there's a stripe. These stripes are what make it striated. And skeletal muscle is voluntary. Voluntary means that if you want to, you can make it contract pretty much at any at any point that you'd like it to. Okay, so that's skeletal muscle. Uh, smooth muscle is not striated and it's not voluntary. When we say not voluntary, a, a single word for that is involuntary. Involuntary means that you cannot make it contract anytime you want. If I tell you, hurry up and digest your food, you cannot do that. You're not in control of that because that's smooth muscle. And then here we've got cardiac muscle, and cardiac muscle is striated. Now, the stripes here, we're kind of a little more zoomed out on this, but you, oops, but you can see if you zoom up that there's some stripes there. And um, uh, cardiac muscle does have those striations, um, but it also is still involuntary. You cannot make your heart beat to whatever temple you want. And remember that when it comes to cardiac muscle, there are these structures called intercalated discs. There's an intercalated disc, there's one, oops, sorry. There's one, there's one, okay. These, <laughs> sorry. These intercalated discs, um, they are um, really important to the way cardiac muscle does its job. We'll be talking about them hmm, a lot when we get to the cardiovascular system. In the meantime, let's just talk about these three different types of muscle tissue. Let's start with skeletal muscle. The descriptions of muscle physiology, muscle cell physiology that we're going to be talking about, that is specifically about skeletal muscle. Cardiac muscle's got a little bit of a tweak. Smooth muscle is even more different. We will uh, not be talking about it in a whole lot of detail, but let's start talking about skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle cells, first of all, are really unusual, and that's why we usually don't call them muscle cells at all. Skeletal muscle cells, we generally refer to as muscle fibers. And skeletal muscle cells, how weird are they? When skeletal muscle cells were first developing while you were still inside of your mama, they were actually uh, tens of thousands of individual little cells that all were close together and then, and then they decided, hey, let's all get together and start a band. And so they all got together and formed an individual muscle fiber. And so now skeletal muscle fibers have got lots and lots and lots of nuclei, tens of thousands of nuclei for many of them. And they're super long, which is odd because they are microscopically small. Like if I had one right here, you, you couldn't see it, right? But even though they're microscopically small, they are many inches long. Any individual skeletal muscle cell is generally about the length of the muscle that it's inside of. So your sartorius that goes from the outside of your hip to the inside of your knee, that whole band of muscle has got muscle cells that are also that long. That's more than a foot long for most of us. So. Um, those are skeletal muscle cells. Cardiac muscle cells, they've got a single nucleus. Um, they're rather small in comparison, but they're connected to each other. Smooth muscle cells, they also have got a single nucleus. Um, they're also relatively small and they are spindle shaped, um, which means that they're uh, generally cylindrical, but pointed on the ends. So let's look at the structure of one of the organs that's known as a muscle. You learned the names of many muscles like rectus femoris or um, tibialis anterior or temporalis. You learned all of these names, right? And um, each one of those by anatomists is considered to be an organ. And it's an organ because it's made of different tissues. It does have skeletal muscle tissue, but it also has connective tissue and nerve tissue and um, muscle connective nerve, oh, not really any epithelial tissue. So a muscle. 
Now, if we start at the big picture, a muscle, uh, this might be, oops, this might be who knows, it could be um, your uh, rectus femoris, let's say, okay? So this is the whole muscle. Now you'll notice that this muscle is divided up into little bundles of muscle cells, okay? Each bundle of muscle cells is called a fascicle, or in some textbooks, a fasciculus. Now, if we blow that up, it looks like this, right? That's when it's blown up. And a fasciculus or a fascicle is a bundle of skeletal muscle cells. Before I go past this, I wanna make a point that a fascicle is not the same thing as a motor unit, but they're not totally different concepts. A fascicle <clears throat> is a bundle of muscle cells and they're all joined together under the same layer of connective tissue. That layer of connective tissue is called the paramecium. So it's a bundle of muscle cells, muscle fibers, all joined together, right? What is a motor unit? A motor unit is a single somatic motor neuron. So a nerve cell that is bringing commands from the central nervous system down to your muscle, so a single somatic motor neuron, and the individual muscle cells that it commands. Um, in general, every individual um, somatic motor neuron is commanding many muscle cells to contract at the same time, and they're called a motor unit. So um, in any given fascicle, like here is a fascicle, uh, these two cells could be part of one motor unit, and these three cells could be a part of another motor unit, and these three cells could be a part of a third motor unit. So fascicle and motor unit, similar concepts, but not the same. Now, let's talk a little bit about muscle cells. A muscle cell is going to be this structure right here that right around here, this gray part, that is the, um, that's the cell membrane of a single muscle cell. Muscle cells, particularly skeletal muscle cells, they are so odd that they generally are referred to as muscle fibers. We don't even usually call them muscle cells. And they have got a tremendous, a remarkable and astonishing amount of structure inside of the cell. Um, when you were learning the different parts of the cell, I hope your instructor uh, went out of their way to make the point that individual living human cells, they are not like, they're not like bags of salt water with stuff floating around in them. I, you know, it's really easy to think that from looking at the pictures in that original chapter in the textbook, like, oh, it's just this bag and it's got stuff floating in it. It's not, it's not like that at all. As a matter of fact, if I could shrink you down and put you into a cell, to you, it would look most like perhaps a futuristic Tokyo, right? Everything's super organized and things moving up and down and everything crowded together and buildings and all of that. That is what the inside of, of living human cells looks like. And I think without a doubt, the structure inside of a skeletal muscle cell is really the epitome of that kind of dramatic and geometric organization. So let's just talk a little bit about the organization. So here is the cell membrane. I'll, I'll mark it with, in red again. The cell membrane is called the sarcolemma. And then if we zoom down inside, you'll see that there are, if you cut across it, you can see these little cylinders, right? One, two, three. And those cylinders are long cylinders and they would go all the way down the length of the cell. So not only are muscle cells the length of a muscle essentially, but the little cylinders inside of the muscle cells are also pretty much the length of the cell. And those little cylinders on the inside are called myofibrils. These are myofibrils. Myofibrils are not the same as muscle fibers. Myofibrils are the many hundreds, sometimes thousands of subunit structures inside of every individual muscle cell muscle fiber, right? The myofibrils. Now we're gonna talk more about the myofibrils in a moment, but 
the muscle fibers the, uh, have lots of these myofibrils. And not only are there lots of these myofibrils, but do you see this stuff that's, that's yellow right here? Wait a second. Do you see this stuff that's yellow? It's not yellow anymore. I just drew on it. Right? But that stuff that's yellow, that is the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum is a highly modified smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And that sarcoplasmic reticulum, what, it's yellow, right? That sarcoplasmic reticulum is wrapped around every one of these myofibrils. Every one of them has got that stuff wrapped around. Okay, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the organization of the inside of muscle cells in a second. So the myofibril, it is made out of smaller uh, structures called myofilaments. Myofilaments are the proteins with really a lot of complex um, quaternary structure. Remember we said like hair is made out of protein, right? But you can't see an individual a keratin protein, far too small to be seen with the most powerful microscope. But clearly I can see my hair, right? And that's because there are so many of those individual proteins put together that it forms, well, in this case, a hair. Uh, here, inside of muscle cells, there are two different proteins. Um, the two proteins, actin and myosin. And those two proteins, they, uh, form such huge quaternary structure that they show up as these myofilaments, myofilaments, and myofilaments are made out of the protein, proteins actin and myosin. Okay, now, a moment ago I showed you a beautiful image of skeletal muscle, right? And when we were looking at skeletal muscle, you could very readily see that there were all of these striations, all of these stripes, okay? Now, poof, they're all gone. What the heck has happened? Well, I want you to imagine that like right here, I've got, whoops, right here, I've got a part of a skeletal muscle, right? It's this really long fiber, right? Now, on that first image where you could see the stripes, we were looking at it like this, okay? We we're looking at it like this, so from the side, you can see the stripes. This picture that you're looking at now, what we've done is we've cut across it, chunk, chunk, cut a little piece out and flipped it around, so now you're looking at it from the end. And it looks totally different. It looks totally different because you cannot see the myofilaments. We've cut across all of those myofilaments. And we are looking at the interior structure of muscle cells. So let me give you a little bit of orientation here. Wrapped around the outside, this is the paramecium of a single fascicle, somewhere like that. And inside the fascicle, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight individual muscle fibers, eight individual muscle cells inside of this one fascicle, all right? And uh, they could be many motor units. I don't know how many motor units they are at this point. Right? Now, when we look at an individual muscle fiber, this is one cell right here. That is one cell. That's one of its nuclei, but it's got lots and lots of nuclei. That's just the one that we can see right here. And what do we see in there? Each one of those pink dots, how many pink dots do you think there are? How many pink dots do you think there are in here? I don't know, 200? I'm going with 200 pink dots in there. Those 200 pink dots, each one of those is a myofibril. And uh, for those of you who are interested in physical therapy or exercise physiology, Every individual muscle cell, its strength is proportional to the number of myofibrils it has inside of it. And also, it is the dominant hypothesis currently that the number of muscle cells you have in your body right now is the same number as the muscle cells that you were born with. It's just that when you were first born, they were really little, and now they're really, really big, okay? so. Um, this is going to be one fascicle. 
So here we've got one um, fascicle right there. This is one muscle fiber. Here would be another one. And inside the muscle fiber, there are lots of myofibrils. And each myofibril, there are myofilaments. And going from, uh, going wrapping around each one of these myofilaments, there is sarcoplasmic reticulum, a highly modified smooth endoplasmic reticulum. All righty, we're going to stop there on this mini lecture, and uh, you should look for the next lecture um, in the YouTube.